on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by one. Hey guys, so welcome back to Bamber Girls Cafe. Today we're going to be doing another holiday recipe. I got me some little ears today. I'm really excited about them, y'all. I had a little nose, but it just did not quite work out with this look. So, we're going to go all sparkly today here at Bellman Girls Cafe. I'm really in a good mood. Um, I'm really enjoying these holidays. I've had a couple little hiccups, but other than that, I'm fine. So, today, we are going to be making a butter pecan cake. This cake is so delicious. It has so many components to it. We're going to be making a cream cheese icing. We are about to really get our life in the kitchen today. Now, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be cutting this cake because this cake is being made for somebody. But I figured I might as well get all dressed up for the little thing I'm going to today and share this recipe with you guys. So, if you guys are interested in seeing how me, myself, and I, Bama Girl Cafe, slays this butter pecan cake, then definitely stay tuned in because it is about to go down. So let's get into some of the things you're going to need. You're going to need flour. You're going to need eggs. You're going to need some milk. Some bacon joy. You're going to need butter for your pecans. Butter for your cake. Bacon powder. Salt. Sugar. You're going to need pans. Now I only have four of these pans, but this is a five layer. Um, it's enough better for five layers, so I'm going to have to reuse one of the pans and make five layers because it's a lot of cake batter. This cake batter is really thick. And we're also going to have vanilla, but i got to grab that. So you're going to need a knife to chop up your pecans, something to roast them in, and I have a cake, um, a cake box I'm going to put in on a little silver cake plate. So y'all, after we get all this mixed up in the oven, we are going to start on the cream cheese ice cream cheese icing. So this video is a little long today. Bear with me because I'm going to take you guys step by step on how to get the perfect holiday cake. Like this cake to me is up there with like the red velvet cake. Like if you like red velvet, then you'll love this one. If you're not a red velvet, you know, if you're not a red velvet person, then this is a good option for you. If you're a red velvet person, then you'll love this one too. Minus the dye and the red dye and the cocoa powder. But, yo, this cake is banging. Like, this cake is a winner. Every time I make it, people love it, okay? They heart this cake. So, with that being said, let me go ahead and get set up. And I'll be back in a second to get started with you guys. Alright, guys, we're back. So, since we had so many because I decided to go ahead and chop some of them off camera. So we're just going to go ahead and chop the rest of these pecans up. And you want to give them a nice rough chop because that is the most important part. You don't want them too chunky, but you don't want them too thin. So we're just going to go ahead and give them a nice chop. And this is a lot of pecans. It's like two and a half cups of pecans because you're going to need some for the inside of the go into the cake batter. And you're going to need some to go on the outside to decorate the cake. And that is the most yummiest part of this cake. Like all the pecans. This cake is a big cake, y'all. This cake is humongous, okay? Talk about holiday cake that looks kind of whimsical and pretty and it's just stacked so perfectly. Like this is my favorite cake. You can never go wrong with this cake during the holidays. And I know I've been doing a lot of videos with pecans. I love pecans this time of year, y'all. They're really cheap this time of year, and you can get them. You can get your hands on a lot of them. Like when we lived, when I lived in Alabama, we had a lot of pecan trees, and we would pick them, and then we would take the time to like pick them, let them, um, you know, get right, and we would just sit there all day cracking pecans for pecan pies and cakes, and roast them and eat them with salt and butter. So like, I love pecans. Um, one of my grandmother's neighbors had like pecan trees in the yard and we would hit the tree to try to shake the pecans down and try to eat them. We would get in so much trouble. But yeah, I love pecans and I love pecan trees. I love the smell of the trees in the, in the fall. They smell so beautiful. Yeah, pecans. 
pecan trees are awesome. All right, give this a couple more chops. And y'all know we gotta toast them off. Wake up all the oils in them. So the reason you toast pecans, almonds, and walnuts and stuff like that, with a little bit of butter, it kind of awakens the pecan and, or the nut and it releases the fragrance that just goes through whatever you're cooking. All right, guys, so those pecans are chopped. So I'm going to go ahead and pour them in the pan and get everything off of there. And then we're going to add in one fourth cup of melted butter. And then I'm just going to give these a toss. Make sure you try to get every pecan coated in the butter because that's very important. And this cake is just so delicious, guys. Like, I'm so excited to be making this cake. And the person I'm making this cake for, I made this cake for them before, and they've been, like, super obsessed with it. So since they're leaving to go to another duty station, I figured this would be a great surprise for them. Sometimes you don't have to buy people gifts. If you're a really good cook, they'll take food. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and pop these into the oven, and then we want to go ahead and get started. So you want to set your oven at 3 50 and you want to give them about five ten minutes then you want to you know stir them every five minutes so it takes about five ten minutes for them to cook and you just want to stir them and um remember once you get them out of the oven you want to take them off of the tray and put them on a plate with paper towels so they will stop cooking because if you don't they will continue to cook and they will burn so we're going to go ahead and pop these in the oven and then we're going to get started on our cake batter okay so we have those in the oven now, I have had a couple people ask me what type of cake stand and mixer am I using. This is what you would call a better home and garden mixer. I got this mixer almost six years ago, guys, and it is bomb.com. The motor in this mixer is actually stronger than the motor in the KitchenAid, and they don't sell them anymore. So I'm really feeling traumatized about that, and I really try to take care of all of the attachments because you... Um, don't necessarily want to lose the attachments if they don't make them or if they get broken. That would be very disastrous. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start by adding in our sugar. And all this lovely butter. And we're going to let it cream. And you want to make sure you get as much as all butter out of the thing as possible. All right. So guys, we're going to let this cream, scrape that, and then I'll be back in a second, and we'll add in one egg at a time. I'm going to bring the camera closer so you guys can see what's really going on in this mixer. So let me get it plugged up, because I didn't plug her up, y'all, and turn her on, and we're going to just let this cream together, and I'll be back in a second. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the ingredients as they're going into the cake mix. So I'm going to be focusing on what's going on inside the bowl so you guys can get a good idea of what the consistency of the cake should be. Because that's very important. Sometimes when you're doing our recipe for the first time, if something doesn't look right, you tend to get a little nervous and you might add something in and that will totally throw the recipe off. Baking is pure science. Everything has to be precise if you want to get the right recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in into the mixer so you guys can see what the butter looks like. And I'm going to let it cream for a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and start adding in one egg at a time. Alright, so it's creamed to where I need it. And now I'm going to start adding in one egg at a time. Oops, well that added all both of them. So right now what I'm going to do, whoo, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and mix the sides of the bowl down because sometimes with stand mixers you have to make sure that you stop and scrape the bowls down because 
they will stick to the side if there's not a lot of batter in there like this one did and then you have to make sure that you scrape down the bottom of it so now that we have that done I'm sorry if my hands look ashy y'all but I don't put lotion on my hands when I'm cooking like you probably should do that So now we're going to go ahead and let that mix a little bit more. Alright, so we're going to scrape it down again and make sure you hit the bottom of that, if, especially if you're using a stand mixer. You really don't have to worry about this as much with a hand mixer as much as you do with a stand mixer. So just make sure that you scrape the bottom of that bowl. And I'm going to let it stir for a little bit longer and then we're going to add in the vanilla. So now we're going to go ahead and add in our vanilla. Our bacon, um, bacon powder. And our salt. And we're going to let that mix. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and scrape down our bowl again. And this is what it looks like. So we're going to let this mix for about five minutes. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start adding in our milk and our flour. And what I'm going to do is set the camera back up, usually how it is, and uh, we're going to sift the flour into it. And then I'll show you what the result of the batter looks like when we add the pecans in. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do with this part of the recipe is that we need to go ahead and sift the flour. So I'm just going to be pouring half of it in there, and then I'm going to be sifting it. This is very important. Um, this cake only needs to be sifted one time, but you do have some recipes that need to be what you call double sifted, but this is not one of them. So now, the flour is sifted almost, y'all. Hey! Guys, I'm trying to get used to focusing in on the camera and looking directly at the camera is really hard, but I'm going to get better. Yes, I am. So, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put half of the flour in there and let it mix. And then we're going to put in half of the milk. You want to 
want to let it mix on slow so all the flour don't fly up in your face and you you look like frosty the snowman oh my goodness i am so enjoying the holidays like i was kind of down the other night because i was missing my sisters especially my older sister but i'm feeling a lot better i get to talk to her like every day all day y'all we on the phone like two old ladies but yeah so now I'm going to go in and add in half of the milk. And the pecans are out of the oven and they're cooling down. Now you don't use all the pecans in the cake. You just want to use a cup and one third, one, a cup and one third of a cup to go into the cake batter. And the rest of them will be used to decorate the outside of the cake with the cream cheese icing, which is banging from left to right. I love that icing. It just hits me all down up in here but yeah that's what we're going to be doing with the rest of it so i'm going to stop this i'm going to go ahead and scrape down the bowl again and then i'm going to add in the rest of the flour And then I'm going to let that mix. And I'm going to start adding in the rest of the milk. And we're going to let this mix for about five minutes. And then I'm going to come back and show you guys what it should look like. And then we're going to add in the pecans. And then we're going to pop this baby into the oven. See you guys back here in a second. guys so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to place the pecans in to the cake mix and you want to get all of them in there I know I lost some it is okay so I went ahead and mixed the bowl I mean scrape the side of the bowl down guys and now I'm just going to let all this mix up make sure when you're making a cake that you um keep your hands clean if you start moving around and doing other stuff because you're going to be using your hands a lot and you don't want to make anybody sick so make sure that you keep your hands clean because I'm a stickler about clean hands okay so I'm going to go ahead get my hands and crank the rinse and then we're going to spray down the last pan so I've already did some of them and I'm going to just go ahead and do the last one and you want to make sure you shake up the bacon joy because the bacon joy because that is very important. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure I spray it really good. And like I said, this cake makes five layers if you're using the size pants that I'm using. And these are the eight inch round pans, and it comes in four, and it just help, it helps you to get even layers so you don't have to worry about slicing cake. I really love these pans by Wilson. So the cake batter is mixed up. I'm going to um, just scrape the sides down one more time and then we're going to go ahead and start putting it into the pot, the pans, the cake pans y'all, the cake pans, the cake pans y'all, the cake pans, the cake pans. pans. Alright, let me stop being silly. All right, so let's let it mix a little bit, about another few seconds. Yep. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the petal. Get all that excess stuff off because you don't want to waste anything because this cake is extra yummy. I'm probably going to wake my neighbors up, but I don't care because I didn't get any sleep last night because they were partying. Okay, guys, so this is what the cake batter looks like. 
as you can see it's really fluffy it's just awesome so I'm just going to take this Wilton scoop and just try to get them as even as possible so I like to use the large Wilton scoop cupcake scoop when I'm doing these pans because it helps me to get a lot more even cake Okay, so those are about even. Like I said, it's going to be enough batter to get four, five layers out of it. So, now I'm just going to go ahead and take this and just smush it down in the pan. And get it even. And you guys, if you guys could smell these pecans in this cake, I tell you, it's just like, ugh, so delicious, so delicious, so delicious, it smells so perfect. So you want to make the, shake the cake, um, hit it on the counter, make sure you get all the air bubbles out of it. And we're going to just continue to do the same thing with the rest of them. And this really helps with the cake, the amount of time that it takes to cook the cake and the amount of time it takes to cool it. That one had a little bit too much. Make sure you get all the air bubbles out. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to finish doing this, and I'm going to pop these into the oven, get my stuff cleaned up, and then we're going to start on the icing. Alright guys, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on our cream cheese icing. I love cream cheese icing, and this is a real life cream cheese icing, because what you want to do is you want to start off by creaming this um, one, I think this is a eight ounce pack of cream cheese, and I like to use the Philadelphia brand. I don't use anything else <laughs> when I'm making my cream cheese icing, okay? And you want to use two sticks of butter, and I have to go get the other one off the counter. I had to divide it up and that's that's one stick Ooh. and we're gonna let this cream together after I get this last piece in it is smelling so good up in here y'all the cakes are almost done So I'm going to be using the whisk because it just helps to aerate the icing, <laughs> to push more air into the icing so that it's fluffy and light and really smooth. So this is what I use when I make my icing. I don't ever use a pedal. Ooh, dangerous. All right, so we're going to split this cream and we have a, some vanilla to go in there and we're going to be using a lot of frosting for this cake. So you're going to need two pounds and like a cup so that's how much it usually takes for um me to get this much so this um this is how much powdered sugar it takes for me to make the amount of frosting i'm going to need for this cake you guys i am so tongue tired right now please forgive me but yes so um let me grab a measuring spoon i guess i won't be grabbing one right now hold on that's okay, I can eyeball it. But you need like two teaspoons of 
vanilla extract and you're also going to need some milk to thin the icing out a little bit. Now I'm not going to tell you how much milk to put into the icing because you need to eyeball it. You might like your, your icing a little bit more stiff than I like mine. You might like a little bit more smoother but I just use the milk to thin it out a little bit if it gets too thick. Alright, our um, cream cheese and our butter has creamed together perfectly. And now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start adding in the powdered sugar. Ooh, I love the way powdered sugar smells. Y'all, I'm in the same mood. Ooh, let me turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down. Yeah, I'm in the same mood today. I'm in a really good mood today, y'all. I'm just really feeling myself in my ears and my sparkly sequin shirts. Yes, honey. <laughs> All right, so we're going to add in a tad bit of milk to thin that out. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a tad bit. Speed it up a little bit. to go ahead and start adding in a little bit more of the pot of sugar and I need to get something to cut this up on it. So guys if I seem like I'm in a rush it's like 9 30 I gotta be somewhere at 11 30. I'm never on time. I'm chronically late. Okay. Ooh, don't make a mess. Don't spill the sugar. Okay. So now we're going to just let that mix on low. And this is how much milk I have left. This is about a half a cup. And I think I'm going to end up using all of this. Powdered sugar. It's delicious. It's in the air. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to be serious today, but it's just not working out because I'm just in a really good mood. And baking makes me happy. So, as y'all can see how stiff that is, that is way too stiff. You're going to tear your cake up trying to use that to, um, you know, to ice a cake. That's not going to work. But we're going to go ahead and add in the rest of the powdered sugar. And... And then we want to add in a little bit more of the milk. And we're going to let it mix up. And as soon as it gets through mixing real good, I'm going to go ahead right now and add in the vanilla. So you want about two teaspoons of vanilla. And I've been doing it so long so I can eyeball two teaspoons. If you're not a seasoned baker, then use a teaspoon. I beg you. So now we're gonna just turn it up a little bit more. And our ice will be done in a second. So while this is mixing up, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the cakes out of the oven and I'll be back as soon as the cakes have cooled down. And we're going to go ahead and start putting this cake together because it's going to be so delicious. Mm. That is good, y'all. That's, that's tasty. Alright, guys. So our cakes are cooled and we're going to go ahead and start decorating them. So, I like to use these little things right here. You can find these little things. Um, They're like little disposable cake plates that they use in the bakeries. These are the wilted ones, and I like this one because it's really fancy, and it's got like the aluminum on it, um, and it's flashy and cute, so I like to use these, and I found this, I got these from Walmart, so you can find them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, anywhere they sell Wiltons, and you get like six of them for like four dollars, so what I like to do is just go ahead and center everything and start by putting a, a good dollop of icing on the cake plate or whatever you're going to put the cake on and this pretty much stops the cake from shifting around 
So we're going to paste the cake face the, the this side down. I'm just going to make sure it's in the center. Push it down. Go ahead and put some icing on it. And I don't put um, the pecans. <clears throat> I don't put pecans in the middle of the cake because there's no need to. And it will make it lumpy and harder to uh, spread. So I used to have, <coughs> excuse me guys, I used to have an, a uh, cake stand that actually spinned around for decorating, but I don't know what happened to it, y'all. Like when we moved out here, a lot of my stuff came up missing in the move. So that was one of the things that I lost. It was actually a marble cake plate. Cake stand. But yeah, we... I don't know what happened. A lot of things got lost mysteriously. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the second layer the same way. I'm going to line it up and make sure it's even. Okay. So while I was waiting for the cakes to cool, I was actually watching the socialite, Sandy socialite. Um, and you know, she just had, if you watch YouTube, then you'll know, like, um, she, uh, she reviews makeup products, but she also has a vlogging channel and her and her husband, they had a set of twins and they just brought the twins home from the hospital. And I'm so excited for them, y'all. Like like she shared the whole journey of her pregnancy on with us on youtube and it's just like it's so exciting to see her bring the babies home them bring the babies home like oh my god it just warms my heart to see people still building like families here you know i think that's such a beautiful thing i can't wait to have a house full of kids y'all <laughs> All right, so we're putting the third layer on. And we're gonna just do the same thing. And just line it up and make sure it's even. This cake sits really high. As you guys can see, it's already three layers and we've got two more to go. And this is what my favorite, favorite, favorite cakes to make. Now see like on this side right here, it's a little lopsided. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit more icing to even it out. Alright, let's go ahead and add on the fourth layer. And I can see where it's still a little uneven. So I'm just going to fill the icing in to even it out. Just a quick trick to even out your cake. Just stick it in there, kind of like spackle it. And you don't have to worry about the crumbs on this cake because this cake is going to get uh, some icing on it. But it will primarily um, be covered with the pecans so you don't have to worry about crumbs or anything. I'm just evening it out. Alright. So let's go ahead and put on the last layer. Dun, dun, dun. 
And um, I was thinking, guys, like, I love to make wedding cakes. So if you guys want to see a wedding cake on the channel this summer or this spring, because I know a lot of people get married and they can't really afford, like, a huge wedding cake, just a basic wedding cake is really expensive. And um, if you guys want to see how to make, like, a two- or three-tier wedding cake, like, I'm so down for it. I'm so down for it, y'all. So if you know somebody um, who wants, who's getting married and you guys want a, a video on a wedding cake and how to do it, then definitely leave me a comment down below because y'all, I can show you literally how to make the perfect wedding cake <clears throat> for under 150 bucks. I'm not even playing. All right. So now what I'm going to do so that I don't get anything on, and I should have did this first, I'm going to take these little pieces of parchment paper and just slide it up under the cake so when I'm decorating it, the icing won't get on the cake plate. I'm going to just start at the top. First, I'm going to go back in and fill in any of those spots that are, you know, got a little gap right there. That's my main priority before I start icing. So once I get this part spread out, before I start putting it in around the edges, I'm going to stick it in a refrigerator so that it can set for a second so that the layers will stop moving because this cake is so high. And then I'm going to add some dolls to it so that it won't slip around. because this cake is really high. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes to let it sit. And then I'm going to place a couple of, well, dowels. But I have like the long um, skewer sticks that will go a lot bit better. And I'm going to just place three of them in the center of the cake. But first, I'm going to let the cake chill out in the refrigerator for about 5 or 10 minutes. So that I can go ahead and ice it without it wiggling around so the icing can kind of set. guys so the cake has set now I'm gonna go ahead and just start putting the icing on it and like I said you're only gonna need like a thin layer on this cake because there's so many layers and there's so much icing in between the layers 
So you just want to put enough icing on here to make the pecans stick. And it doesn't have to be all neat and pretty because the pecans are going to cover the imperfections of the cake. That's why you want to make sure <clears throat> you want to make sure you get enough you get enough icing in between the layers and then you'll be fine. And get the top of the cake as smooth as possible. Because this is one of those cakes where you can really add too much icing front to it and it will take away from the cake. I'm just leaning a little bit. That's okay, y'all. The only part of the cake that I'm really worried about making sure it's really frosted, really good, is the top part because that's what people are going to see. But the rest of it I'm not really concerned about because, like I said, <clears throat> it's going to be covered with pecans. And even some of the top will be. So I'm just going to hit the edges at the bottom of the cake to make sure it's really covered. And then I'm going to run a border around that. So like Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my spatula and run it under some really, really hot water. Let me grab a paper towel one second. So you want to take your spatula and run it. <clears throat> I'm sorry, y'all. My allergies are so bad. <clears throat> um, I'm going to take the um, spatula and just heat it up under some hot water. And that will help to smooth out the icing. I should have had some hot water on the side. I did not think about it. So be patient with me, y'all. <laughs> and if you want to just make sure you get um, the spatula warmed up. And that will help to smooth out the icing. And then you want to make sure you get all of the water off of the spatula. Like, you don't want any water on this spatula. But this will just basically help to smooth the cake out on the top. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and put some icing in this bag because I'm going to do a small border around the cake. And I'm going to do a couple flowers on top to basically hide where I put the little dials in. And that'll be it. So yeah. And I like to use these Wilton's disposable um. Icing bags because I just I really love these little bags and I am just murdering this y'all. I'm in a hurry and I'm a little nervous because I have somewhere to be today to deliver this cake and y'all I'm gonna be late. Good thing they're not paying me for it. Cause I would be so upset if I was late delivering a cake that was paid for. But um yeah, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just start placing the cunt. And basically what you want to do is just start and roll your way up the side. Let me turn it around so you guys can see it. You're gonna have some that fall off. Don't worry about it. That's why we put the uh, this parking paper down. And you just want to take it in your hand and just roll it up the side. And just keep doing it all the way around the cake. 
And if you have some pieces like that don't catch the ice, that, that don't get on, just go back and fill it in. Now you guys see why we needed all those pecans in the beginning of the video? Like, it is so necessary because this cake is so huge. And the pecans are the best part about the cake. Literally, they are the best part about the cake. Y'all, every time I make this cake, no lie, I'm like always afraid that I'm gonna run out of pecans. In the back of my head, like, I always panic <laughs> when it comes to this cake because I'm always afraid, like, I'm going to run out of icing or I'm going to run out of pecans before I finish the cake. And it just wrecks my nerves. But it is so delicious, and I never run out. I always have just enough. Like, literally just enough. And that's so crazy. Like... Whoever did this recipe, like they measured it down to the T. Like they did it. With the amount of pecans that are needed to the amount of powdered sugar that you need for the cake, like they measured it down to the T. Like the cake gods were with them when they were working this <laughs> recipe because it is so delicious and it's just it's it's the form um the recipe is just it's tasty like I, I don't even know how to describe it it's just a really tasty recipe like look how beautiful that looks with those pecans on there and that's why I was telling you guys like don't worry about if like you don't have to cover um, the cake perfect um, because the pecans are going to be on there and that's really what's going to be covering the cake. Alright, so I need to just, I don't know what I was thinking when I did the icing bag, y'all. Like, I can do that a lot better, but it's okay. So, what I'm going to do it's just go around the top of the cake and just do some little flowers. Not the, yeah, the, I'm going to do some in the center too. And then I'm going to pipe a border on the edges of the cake. At the bottom, I got a little spot where I need a couple more cones. Then I'm going to let this sit in the refrigerator for another 10 or 15 minutes while I change my clothes so that I, it will travel good. And uh, that'll be it. And I'll take a picture of the cake at the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some rosettes in the center of the cake. I'm going to do three of them. And I'm going to go ahead and ease, like, be really careful when you remove still got a little bit on the cake plate that's fine I can always clean that up with a damp paper towel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all let me wipe off the counter because I got pecans everywhere y'all and um, then we're going to do a little border around the bottom of the cake and I'm just going to add some more icing one second y'all Okay, 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a trim or a border around the bottom of the cake. Let me take this paper towel and just wipe that off. Oops. Open this up. And like I said, y'all, this recipe, like the amount of icing that you use for it, um, is perfect. You can use more if you want to, um, if you're an icing freak, but like you really don't need a lot of icing for this cake. You really, really don't. And just trying to get all the icing out of the bowl. Ugh. I love icing, y'all. Am I the only person who loves icing? Yeah, I'm probably not. Okay. Make sure we don't have any air there. And I'm just going to basically do the same thing I did on the top. But make them a little smaller. Pull it up so you guys can see. So I really am looking forward to hopefully this summer getting to take the Wilton's cake decorating class because I can decorate cakes really good, but there are some things like I feel like I need to some um, a little bit of help with. So if you make a mistake, just take it off and remove it. It's fine, like I just did. So I feel like there are a lot of things I could learn from the Wilton's course that could really like take me to the next level as far as my cake decorating and I want to be able to teach the Wilson's course too so yeah that's what I'm working towards that is my goal for 2017 and I think I'm going to just pipe a little bit more around the front no need to waste all that good icing How about that? All right, y'all. So this cake is done. It's a little lopsided, but that's okay. Um, I didn't level the cake out because it's not um, it, it's not gonna fall over or anything. I did add some dowels into it to keep it from moving around because I do have to transport the cake all the way on the other side of post. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that the cake is stable. So. This is the cake, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, I cannot cut the cake because the cake, the cake is not for me. Um, it's for someone, so I won't be able to cut it. But what I will do is at the restaurant, I will get some pictures of the cake so you guys can see it, see what it looks like. But I really enjoyed doing this video. The cake turned out beautiful. It smells delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry if I was a little messy and a little off today. I'm just like super excited. And I had a lot of caffeine. So, um, yeah, I'm just super excited about getting more videos up. Like, this is the most videos I've gotten up in a consecutive amount of time since I've been here on YouTube. So, remember that anything is possible i'm so looking forward to 2017 hoping that by you know february i'll be up to five or six hundred subscribers i'm not going to get upset if i don't make it because i really enjoy the subscribers that i have but if you would like to share these videos on um facebook or instagram you are more than welcome to share them i will not get upset uh, with that being said remember treat people where you want to be treated a little bit of kindness goes a long ways and to be 
you know, a little bit kinder and sweeter and romantical because it is the holidays and just try to get into the spirit of things. If you don't celebrate Christmas, if you're Jewish or you celebrate other um, religious things during the holiday, then I wish you the best and I hope you enjoy those holiday traditions too. Um, I love you guys. Just be nice, be kind, be caring, and be sincere. And I'll see you guys back here in a couple of days. Alright guys, here's a picture of the cake close up. Ooh, let me zoom out. Alright, so I'm gonna just add this at the end of the video so you guys can see it. But yeah, this is the cake. Dun, dun, dun. All right, guys. See you guys later.